Apple yeah. So, did you know, though, this otter is misspelled? O-D-D-E-R is not how you spell otter. That's how you spell odd-er. I wonder what this otter is going to be about. And look, there's a map of the Monterey Bay, which is very close to where we live. Pacific Ocean, Monterey Bay. Yeah, right here in California. So I have a feeling this is going to be about an area very close. Well, it's a real story. Yeah, I know, but it's going to be close to about where we live. Mm -hmm. The Oceans of Thanks. And it says, it is a happy talent to know how to play. That was by a very famous American author named Ralph Waldo Emerson. Yeah. Okay. Now the page of contents. Chapter 1. The Queen of Play. Monterey Bay, California, and environs. Environs means the surrounding areas. Not exactly guilty. In their defense, sharks do not, as a rule, eat otters. True, sharks sometimes taste them, by mistake leaving frowning bites or the jagged clue of tooth or two, of a tooth or two. But then, in fairness, nobody's perfect. Hmm. Too late. Say an empty-bellied great white shark is enticed by a long, sleek swimmer. A sea lion, perhaps. Big fans of blubber sharks. Curious, the shark moves in for the nibble. Only to discover he's sampling a surfer. Oops! Or, more likely, a member of that most charming branch of the weasel family, the southern sea otter. You've been there, haven't you? In the cafeteria line or the breakfast buffet, taking a chance on some new food. Grab, gulp, grimace. You spit the offending item into a napkin. No harm, no foul. Same goes for the shark, who quickly reconsiders and retreats. Of course, by then it's often too late for the surfer, and almost always too late for the otter. Hmm. Hunger. One such shark is prowling the waters this very morning. It's daybreak, cloudless and shell pink, and for a moment the bay seems to blush. There it is, his dorsal fin cutting through the calm waves. The shark is an adolescent, a marine tween, streamlined and strong, but small for his age, and far from his usual hunts today. His last meal, a ray, and two puny turtles. Was three days ago, pathetic by any measure. No need to worry, hunger has a way of focusing the mind. If there is food to be found, rest assured, he will find it. Otter number 156. Not far from the shark, otter number 156 floats on her back, four paws and flippers held aloft, soaking up sun like tiny solar panels. Tucked in a pocket of skin, under her arm is a favorite rock, just right for opening muscles and clams. She has seen more than a few sharks in her three years, has even seen them kill. But right now, her only concern is what to eat for breakfast. Numbers and names. Friends call number 156 Otter, but humans prefer their numbers. They count cards and sheep, errors and, and at-bats, minutes and blessings. Here in the bay, they count otters, too. Squiggles and Splash there's a reason for those numbers, endearing names, enchant the public, luring humans too close. Numbers are aloof, but names are sticky. Fussing rescuer to rescued, scientist to subject, human to otter. And it's not hard to fall in love with an otter pup. It's a shame, really. 
Think of the possibilities. Squiggles and Splash, and Potter and Noodle. Otto and Oswald, and Ozzy and Obi. Still, it's better this way. These otters need all the help they can get. Questions. Her mother called her otter from the moment she was born. Something about the way the little pup never settled. Something about the way her eyes were always full of questions. To eat or not to eat. A few feet away from Otter, her favorite companion, Carrie drifts on her back, aimless as a log. Carrie, two years older than Otter, has shiny ebony fur. Otter, smaller and more agile, has a deep brown coat and caramel-colored head. Play. Otter wants to know or eat. First we eat, then we play, answers Carrie. Who is always practical, a cautious sort? It's annoying, but when you're a free spirit like Otter, teeming with a wise and sol solid anchor is never a bad idea. First we play, then we eat, says Otter. She gives her friend a soft nose nudge and drives through quiet water thick with e eelgrass. Communication When you cannot text or email, whisper a secret or shout a protest, when words are not your way, how do you share what you know? Otters. Whistle and whine, snarl and hiss, blow and snort. And don't forget sight and scent, and almost of all touch, nudges and licks, headbutts and gentle bites. Every species has its tricks. Underwater. Underwater, there's no need for noise for grunts or squeals or chirps. But when you can twist and pretzel and weave, not when you've turned frolic into art. Ballet. Do you think she's talking about the, the way otters swim? Do they have an art to them? Are they like ballet swimmers, Apollo? I guess so. Yeah? I, you fed otters before. Yeah. And what did they do? Were they very graceful? Yeah. When I stopped feeding them, they all begged me for more. Yeah. What kind of what communication did they give you? Did they grunt they and squeal? Squeal. Yeah. Grunted. Yeah. So we've already talked about communication. Now we're going to talk about their ballet in the water. Ballet. The chase begins through the marshy shallows of Elkhorn Slough toward the icy deep waters of the bay. In, out, up, down, pirouettes, and lifts and dips, a bubbly ballet. Far enough, Carrie says, when they pause at last. Their small, smooth heads could be slick rocks in a riverbed. Otter black back flips, disappears, pops up a few feet away. Silly minnow, she teases, just a little bit further. And the ballet moves on to act two. The slough. A slough is heaven for an otter, placid and swampy, with easy pickings just a few feet down, and voila, your meal. Of course, there are more humans around, sightseeing boats, kayaks and canoes, everyone anxious to glimpse the otters and sea lions, the regal great blue herons, the double-crested corma cormorants, the comical pelicans, the bay. Beyond the slough lies Monterey Bay, a whole different animal, a watery whale, huge and intimidating, but breathtaking, beneath the surface. Kelp forests weave green blankets while sun shafts cut like blades. Some say the food is better there, succulent crabs if you're willing to work for them, but the dangers give many second thoughts. Not Otter, though. She loves a good crab. Daily Schedule An otter's life goes like this. Eat, groom, sleep, eat, groom, sleep, eat, groom, sleep. But always there is time for a bit of deep diving, wave chasing, tail spinning, smooth gliding, bubble blowing fun. The Queen of Play 
Nobody plays like Otter plays. Nobody has her moves. She loves to rough house, can be pushy and eager, too unruly for some, but watching her work the water is a joy. She doesn't just swim to the bottom, she dive bombs. She doesn't just somersault, she triple donuts. She doesn't just ride the waves, she makes them. Otter sounds like a fun otter, huh? Mm -hmm. Diet. The shark, meanwhile, is closer to the mouth of the slough, still hunting, a soundless ocean ghost. He can eat hugely, gorge, then go for days unfed. But a sea otter is always eating. Luckily, her belly doubles as a dinner table. Without the swaddling blubber of a seal or whale, she must consume a quarter of her weight each day. Abalones and sea urchins, octopuses and sea stars, mussels and crabs and clams. Like a carb-loading marathoner, like a hummingbird sipping nectar dawn to dusk. Whoa, the otter has to eat that much just to keep warm. Jaws. No one pities sharks. There are no great white bambies. And that's to be expected. Given the grim smile, those thousands of triangular teeth, row upon row upon row. There are other perks, though. The way the ocean seems to part at their approach. And don't forget the Hollywood factor. A movie like Jaws could never be made about otters. Cute. Still, it's hard. If you're an ocean resident, not to resent otters, their easy popularity, the way they woo the crowds, they are, it's been said, the champions of cute. Those eyes, like a doze, the expressive whiskers, the gold medal aquatic gymnastics, and being photogenic does help with memes, with keeping the fans engaged. Only the foolish want selfies with a shark. What do you think, Apollo? Selfies with an otter or selfies with a shark? Selfies with an otter. Ooh. Yeah, probably a good choice. Kayaker. Otter twists and sees what she has already heard and scented. A human slicing through the small waves. Half his body tucked in a hard shell shaped like a giant sardine. His awkward churning a paddle for paws is painful to watch. She loves kayakers, admires their hopeless desire to be what they cannot, creatures of the water. Her, she has visited several curious about their sweating foreheads and water bottles. The binoculars they use for eyes. The kayaker slows the, and otter slips under water coming up close enough to see his white teeth. We only have, like, we don't need binoculars for Yeah, and smell his exertion. They're just having otter make fun of us humans who can't move like, like the otter can in the water. Wary. Otter! It's Carrie calling. Urgently, always the killjoy. Ever wary. Otter, she calls again. Keep your distance. The kayaker makes sounds, kind ones. An otter decides, as it happens, she has heard her share of angry humans. Still, she does as Barry has commanded, and with a stroke of her tail, she vanishes from view. Scolding. Sorry, otter tells Carrie. Sometimes I forget to be careful. Carrie paddles in a lazy circle. One of these days, they will put you in a cage, and I will never see you again. One of these days, you'll end up at high water for good. You worry too much, Carrie, Otter says. Why do you get so close to them? Carrie asks. Just curious, Otter answers. They helped me once, don't forget. Otter submerg submerges her head, then lifts and shakes it, and droplets catch the sun. High water. The otters call it high water. The aquarium perched above the edge of the bay. More land than water, more air than ocean. The accommodations are solid. 
if you happen to be a water dweller. The staff is first rate, the food is to die for. House rules enforced with vigor, predators kept away from prey, separated by thick walls of glass. Not a bad place to stay, all things considered. Although, once you've checked in, departing can be difficult. Hmm, did she check into an aquarium? It's like Hotel California, right? Once you check in, you can never leave. All right, well, troublemaker. Otter has been in trouble before. She has a soft spot for humans, understandable, given the way she was raised considering all she was taught. So what if she investigates a dock or a sandbar from time to time? So what if she nudges a scuba diver to say hello? So what if she tries to leap onto a kayak or canoe to better know her story? Is that so wrong? Yes, say the other otters. Carry to, and judging by the way certain humans trap and relocate her to quiet waters away from trouble, whenever she gets too friendly, eight times and counting, maybe her friends have a point. Man, Otter's been relocated eight times, Apollo? Maybe her friends do have a point. Motherly advice. Otter doesn't remember much about her mother. Pups are with their moms five or for five months or so, a year at most, but Otter wasn't that lucky. Still, she does recall one piece of advice her mother used to repeat. Stay away from sharks. Stay away from humans. Stay away from all that you don't understand. Back then, Otter didn't know what a human was, and she'd never seen a shark, but she got the drift all right. Be afraid of the world, my daughter. Carrie would have liked Otter's mother. Hmm. <coughs> Fast enough, slow enough. Near the entrance to the slough, the shark hesitates. He scents the otters, but doesn't see them clearly, not yet. His sight is no match for his glorious sense of smell. They are captivating, blood-rich, fast enough to be a decent challenge, slow enough to make an easy meal. Tell me a story. Race you to the drop, Otter asks, glancing at the point where the slough empties into the far deeper bay. I'm tired, Carrie says. I don't feel like racing. Tell me a story instead. You're just trying to distract me, Otter replies. You know me too well, says Carrie. Scary stories. Are you ready for this, Apollo? Mm -hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Tell me about the 50 again, says Carrie, because it is a scary story, and scary stories are the best at least when the sun is out and the waters are calm. Otter shimmies and bounces, but everyone knows that story, she says, and she's right. The story of the fifty is every otter's story. For a moment, Carrie seems to be shivering, her eyes glazed and unseen. Carrie? Otter asks. Are you all right? Carrie blinks and shakes her head. I'm fine, just a little tired. Otter hesitates. Carrie hasn't been herself. The past few days, she seemed sluggish and distracted. You're sure? Remember when Amiya had the shaking sickness? I'm fine, Carrie says firmly. The 50, please. Otter dives, resurfaces, spirals. The 50, she begins, and Carrie clasps her forepaws together and falls silent for the 50. Once in times past, when the ancients lived, the ocean was filled with our kind, Otter says, but that changed not so very long ago. There were only 50 of us, and that was all. Because of sharks, Carrie interrupts. Not really, Otter twists and turtles. Not then, because of sickness, Carrie says. 
Some otter spins and rolls. But mostly that came later. Because why then, Carrie asks. Otter glances at the faraway kayaker, now just a drifting dot, so small he might be an egret or a marsh wren. Because of them, she says, and then she plunges under the waves. Ooh, who was their biggest predator in the 50, Apollo? Humans. Yeah. Deep dive. A sea otter can stay underwater for six or seven minutes, and that is what otter does. It's fun to build suspense. That's pretty good. Six or seven minutes, that's better than most humans. The but, end. But whales aren't even... But dolphins are even better. Oh yeah, dolphins and whales for sure. Mm -hmm. The end. When Otter blasts back to the air and sun, her friend is waiting impatiently. Now tell me the rest, Carrie demands, still back floating. There is no rest, Otter somersaults. There were fifty, and now there are more. Three thousand, perhaps. And we are part of that more, Carrie asks. All of us, yes. We all come from the fifty. Otter rubbed her nose. The end. I liked it better the last time you told it, Carrie complains. Stories change, says Otter. As she zooms past Carrie, now let's find us some breakfast, my friend. Mm. So do you think there were only 50 of these otters left at one point because of humans, Apollo? I guess so. That's what they're implying, huh? The sighting. The intriguing scent becomes something more for the shark. There they are above him on the surface, long, dark silhouettes with webbed feet and muscular tails. He's glimpsed some before, but never this close. They are sinuous, but not eel sleek. They don't shimmer in the way of a mackerel or a ray. Wouldn't sea lions be bigger than this? Maybe these are the young sea lions, babies even. They move surprisingly well, with a certain elegance, but they're no match for him. One is slower, and that will be his target. No reason to expend extra energy, although what a feast two would make. He feels the sharp complaint of hunger and presses on. Who do you think he is, Apollo? It's a shark. Yeah. The fin. Just a little further, Otter says as the beguiling wild song of the bay calls to her. Carrie is right beside her. Please, Otter, she says. Let's go back. And Otter hears her fear. We've gone too far. The sun sparks the waves as the wind picks up, and then Otter sees it, and her heart lurches. Gliding, glimmering, almost beautiful, the dorsal fin of a great white shark. Speed. A few thrusts of the shark's powerful tail, and he'll have them, easy as that. Sometimes even he is shocked by his own speed. The chase. Otter lets loose. A high-pitched scream through Carrie needs no warning. She is already churning the water, and Otter sees the terror of her friend's eyes, and both otters move like they have never moved, but he is on them already. Otter can feel him slice the surface in two. She can smell his hunger. Turning back. Otter knows this is all because of her, because she is reckless, and the wrong-headed and curious to a fault. She hears a strangled cry and turns to see the shark has nipped her friend's tail. As the awful stench of blood blooms in the water, a full-grown white would have devoured them both by now. But this shark must be young, inexperienced, or confused. Carrie is slower. There is only one thing to do. And so Otter twists, turns back, passes her wounded friend, heading directly toward those jagged rows of teeth, those unfeeling eyes. Confusion. It was just a small bite, but the hint of blood makes the shark bold. Some part of him wonders if he's made a mistake. The taste, perhaps, but it's too late. He's pure muscle and instinct now. As he moves in for the kill, 
He's met with his sheer, with its sheer movement, flipping and twisting and eruption of bubbles, the reek of fear. It's under him, behind him, hitting his flank. How could it be? But it is. It's one of them, not the one he nipped. The, uh, the other, hurling herself at him. It's impossible. Never has he seen anything move like this. He tries to focus on the wounded one, the slower animal heading away, but this other frenzied thing, whatever it is, won't let him be. Trapped. And so he veers, and there she is, and his mouth is open wide and waiting, and clamp, snap, gnash, she is trapped in his jaws where she belongs. Ew. That's what it implies. Beyond. Of course, she's felt pain, but this is new. A black void, beyond hurting, beyond understanding. Oops. Instantly, the shark knows this is wrong. All wrong. His jaws unlock, his head jerks, his prey floats free. It's full. It's all fur and bone. So much hair and not even a hint of blubber. A ray would have been more satisfying, a rockfish even. It's no sea lion, that's for sure. The taste is vile. And he's even lost a few teeth. A few teeth, not that it matters. They plop anew unbidden. Still, what a waste of time and a good thing. His embarrassing failure went unwitnessed by other sharks. Hmm. Otters must taste terrible to a shark. Maybe if they eat the otters for seven straight days, their saliva will adjust and they'll like to eat otters. What do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It's what Wow in the World would say, right? Mm -hmm. Or Harvard Science. All right. The beach. Perhaps she is swimming or perhaps she is dreaming because why else would she be moving like this? jerkily, uncertainly, trailing the smell of her own impending death. Somewhere, Carrie might be calling to her, This way, this way, this way! The dizziness dulls the pain, makes it seem to belong to some other animal. Advice bubbles up, wisdom gleaned from other older otters, head for the shore. Blood in the water is an invitation. Move as little as necessary, conserve energy, and so she struggles toward a nearby patch of beach. Is she imagining it, or didn't she once find salvation on land? Hauled out. Hauled out, it's called, and indeed it is a haul flopping 45 pounds onto solid land when you are meant for water. And yet Otter does it, despite the gaping wound on her belly, perhaps because she knows she has done it before, even as she's drained of blood and hope. A gull lands inches away, preening, wondering if there will be something to gain from such a mess. Otter blinks. The sun is so good, so kind. How hard it would be to die at night. She's not mad at the gull doesn't even blame the shark. She's seen enough to know that this is how life is, and that is how death comes. Retreat. The shark moves on into deeper waters, a bit wiser but still famished, still weary, wearing the scent of his victims. Okay, what do you say we stop right here for tonight, and we do the rest tomorrow? Yeah? Okay. Say adios to your audience. Adios. Adios! Yeah.